Coming up on Eyewitness News Nightcast, pressing the flesh for your vote, flashing a card for your sexual safety, and pushing a button to blast a building that doesn't quite come tumbling down. I'm Dan Housley. Eyewitness News Nightcast is next. Channel 7, Buffalo. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? This is Eyewitness News Nightcast. Now, with Western New York's number one newscast, here is Dan Housley. Topping Eyewitness News Nightcast, the heat is on. Buffalo's mayoral race is running at a fever pitch as it heads into the final day of the campaign. Liberal candidate Nick Costantino warmed up the weekend politicking by asking George Arthur to pull out of the race. Costantino says the Common Council Prez doesn't have what it takes to win because the Buffalo News won't endorse him. Therefore, he says Arthur should give him the best shot at voters who don't want Mayor Griffin re-elected. Caught up with at a Westside restaurant tonight, Arthur said he finds the suggestion funny, especially coming from a man who has never won political office and who the polls say doesn't stand much of a chance of winning this one. Uh, I think it's most ridiculous. I think it's laughable. And it's something that, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't even entertain in a this suggestion and idea because as it stands right now, uh, I am going to win this election. I will be going on to become the next mayor of the city of Buffalo. Meanwhile, Mayor Jimmy Griffin started off his day of running for re-election by watching others run in the 10-kilometer run for Buffalo. You've got one more chance to watch all the candidates tangle on the same stage. They're all scheduled to appear on AM Buffalo tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock right here on Channel 7. It's already election day in Central America. Voters in Guatemala are casting their ballots in an election that may end 31 years of military rule. Eight candidates are running for the presidency now held by General Oscar Mejia Victoros. There's some surprising election news from the Philippines tonight. President Ferdinand Marcos says he may call a presidential election within three months. He says he wants to settle questions about his popularity once and for all. Appearing on this week with David Brinkley, Marcus said he'd welcome U.S. congressmen to monitor those elections. While the U.S. wrestles with its support of Marcos, the Washington Post says the CIA is trying to bring down Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. And Ronald Reagan wants to know how the Post found out about it. Dean Reynolds has more. As reported by the Post, the plan is designed first to impede Gaddafi's ability to assist anti-American insurgents or terrorists and second, to lure him into some ill-conceived foreign adventure that might eventually topple him from power. The Post referred to U.S. intelligence reports tying Gaddafi to at least 30 insurgent or terrorist groups in Central America, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. The newspaper said the presidentially authorized plan for action by the CIA does not call for Gaddafi's assassination, something forbidden under terms of an executive order Mr. Reagan himself signed. The story said there's been qualified support from congressional intelligence committees for the plan, which up until now had been a closely guarded secret. And while the president had nothing to say about the report, an administration spokesman said an investigation is underway to determine who leaked the information to the Post, with appropriate action to follow. As for Gaddafi, the target of the alleged plan, there was no immediate reaction forthcoming. But the swift and angry administration reaction to the story indicates it has struck a nerve deep within the American intelligence community. First, because it exposes something that was supposed to be secret, and second, because it may serve to mobilize opposition to the plan that might otherwise not have existed. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Washington. In southern Mexico, the hunt is on tonight for drug traffickers who staged a brutal win in the international war on drugs. The traffickers ambushed and killed 21 policemen who today stumbled upon several tons of marijuana. He's been in jail since 1964, but tonight, South African activist Nelson Mandela is in the hospital. The 67-year-old civil rights leader is in stable condition following prostate surgery this afternoon. Mandela has been in prison for the past 21 years. Two French Secret Service agents are facing a long prison term. In a surprise move, the men pleaded guilty today to charges that they ordered the New Zealand sinking of the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior. The French government is already taking responsibility for the sinking, which claimed the life of a Greenpeace photographer. A court decision is expected soon over that Soviet sailor who jumped from his ship in the Mississippi River. Ukrainian-American courts want the Ukrainian-American groups want the courts to stop the ship from leaving American waters with a man who is apparently seeking asylum in our country.
Meanwhile, Soviet troops are still surrounding the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. Inside is a Soviet soldier who is trying to decide whether he wants to defect. The U.S. is upset that the embassy is under siege, but officials are talking with the soldier to find out what he wants to do. Investigators are still trying to figure out why a grain elevator blew up in a small South Dakota town. Three people were killed when the 100-foot concrete silo exploded and caught fire. Adding to the personal tragedy could be an economic one. The local economy runs on grain, and the mayor says serious trouble is ahead if the silo isn't fixed, but fast. Still ahead on Nightcast, a card to say you're clean for sex, and a whale of a wanderer at sea. Tonight's winning lottery numbers are 770 and 6384.